Hello, everybody, and welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're going to be doing some work in the signal integrity tool in Altium Designer because we're going to be talking about some of the simplest ways that you can reduce crosstalk in your PCB design. So to reduce crosstalk, there are generally two simple ways to do it. First is, of course, to space out those traces a little bit, and then the other is to bring ground closer to your traces and then resize them to hit your impedance target. So, which of these is most effective? Well, we're gonna qualify these strategies and talk about when you should use them in this video. We're gonna do a demo in Altium Designer, and then we're gonna validate that demo in Simbior. Let's go ahead and get started. So, what are some simple ways to reduce crosstalk in your PCB design? Well, we're gonna validate two methods here in this video. Now, control over crosstalk is really all about control over mutual capacitance and mutual inductance between traces in your design. So, what are the simple ways to control mutual capacitance and mutual inductance? It's all about controlling the geometry of your traces as well as how far apart they are spaced from each other in comparison to the distance to ground. So that might sound like a lot, but basically this reveals two possible strategies that we're gonna to qualify today. One is increase the spacing between your traces. Number two, keep the spacing the same, but bring ground closer to those traces so that they couple more strongly to ground than they do to each other. So to validate these strategies, I have here in Altium Designer a test board that I've set up. Now, sometimes when I'm doing interconnect simulations or I have to qualify a particular interconnect design, I will create a test board, and a test board is a very important piece to use for simulation-driven design. So here on this test board, we basically have three interconnects with defined spacing and width. Now here, these interconnects come in pairs, and this is not a differential pair, although it is set up like a differential pair. It's not a differential pair. This is actually pairs of single-ended traces that are coupled to each other. So here, the first trace on the bottom, we see that it is very closely spaced to the second trace, and the spacing between them is equal to one W, so one times the width of these traces. So here, in this uh, lower pair of traces, the spacing between our traces is 1W, meaning one times the width of the trace. So you can see here my width is 4.5 mils, same thing for the bottom one, and the spacing between them is also 4.5 mils. Here, I am varying that parameter across these other two groups. So here we go to 2W spacing, and then up here we have 3W spacing. So this is going to allow us to evaluate what happens when we, of course, vary the spacing, and intuition should tell us that we should get less crosstalk if we do this. Now, the other parameter that we can vary is the thickness of the dielectrics above and below these traces. So here, inside the layer stack manager, I have this set up with five mil dielectrics above and below. What we're gonna do is initially simulate all of this first, and I'll show you all how to set up the crosstalk simulation. And then we'll go ahead and change this and see how these results change. So to set up crosstalk simulation, it's actually pretty simple. We just go up to tools and signal integrity. And the first thing we need to do is assign some models to the IOs on these components. Now, assigning models is difficult because um, sometimes you may not have a model, in which case you need to use a standard logic family model, and that's what's programmed in here. So here we're using the HC model, and I actually describe all of these different logic family models in a previous video on signal integrity in Altium Designer. So make sure to check out that link in the description. You can go watch that video. This logic family is defined in the schematic and it's also selectable here in this signal integrity model dialog. The other thing you can do is you can apply an IBIS model. Now IBIS models are behavioral models. They are specific to specific components. And if you know you're gonna use a particular component and a particular IO on that component, then you can use an IBIS model as well. So we're just gonna Take the easy route here for now because this is just a generic test board and we're gonna keep the HC model for all of these. Now, when I hit analyze design, of course, what it's going to do is it's going to analyze all of the un undershoot and overshoot as well as the impedance. And here I can just turn on the impedance column and if I rearrange these nets alphabetically, I can see here what the impedance of each of these traces is. So here you can see 
My impedance for my traces here is about 45 ohms, so I'm about 10% below a 50 ohm target. And then to set up crosstalk, we just grab these two nets. I set an aggressor. I'm gonna set W1 as our aggressor, and then we can run the simulation. So here, we're quantifying the crosstalk for the 1W spacing. And if I just hit crosstalk waveforms, it's gonna go through, it's gonna run it. Here we go, we have our results. So here, for our 1W results, we can see what the value is for the peak crosstalk, about 25 millivolts for the far end crosstalk, and then about 40 millivolts for the near end crosstalk. Now, what happens if we were to say, then switch this to the farther spacing? Well, intuition would tell us that crosstalk should go down. So this is a nice, simple validation that everything you're doing in your design is correct and that the simulator is running correctly as well. So here, I'm gonna then add in five and six. Just for ease, I'll set five as the aggressor. We hit crosstalk waveforms. So now you can see that just spacing out the traces produces a pretty remarkable change in the crosstalk. So here, we're getting all the way down to about two millivolts here for the peak uh, crosstalk value for near end crosstalk. And here we get about the same value for the far end crosstalk. So compare this previously. So here we get about a factor 10 reduction if we just compare these different graphs. So that's a pretty big reduction. And I think anybody that's having crosstalk problems would appreciate a factor 10 reduction in the crosstalk. So that's a lot of reduction. So all we did was space out the traces. We didn't change anything in the layer stack. So next, let's validate this in Symbior and see if these results are really believable. In Symbior, what I've done is I've set up a similar signal stimulus for this same test board. I'm gonna just import this directly from the ODB++ files. Here, what we wanna do is then select these different nets. And we need to select these nets while setting up some compliance conditions. So here we want to evaluate the crosstalk noise. I want to basically evaluate anything above 40 millivolts. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the value for the coupling allowance between these nets. So here, 20 mils, I think that's plenty of distance. Um, I'm going to set this to 40 mils. And what that would essentially allow you to do is examine coupling between traces that were a bit farther apart. So you could leave this as 20 mils, but if you had something that was a little farther away over here, maybe 40 mils away, you could then grab that trace uh, just using this entry here in the coupling distance field. So here, if I just hit run, we can already see what kind of crosstalk we're getting when we just replicate that signal stimulus over here into Symbior. So here, crosstalk amplitude of about 15.6 millivolts. And if you remember here in Altium Designer, when we looked at those closely spaced nets, we see that we have similar values here. For the far end crosstalk, we have about 20 millivolts, and then here in Symbior it says it's 15 millivolts. So now that we have this, we can build very quickly a model, and then what we're gonna do is extract that model and extract the results from a crosstalk simulation. Here we just wanna look at what happens with a response, and then we wanna just plot the time domain crosstalk we're gonna ignore the insertion and return loss for now. So here's our results. And just from looking at this, it might not be clear where the crosstalk is, but you actually have to zoom in very close near the origin because the crosstalk is so low. Remember, we're dealing with about 20 millivolts or 10 millivolts of crosstalk, something that we would expect. And that's exactly what we see here with this crosstalk result here in blue. So we very clearly see that here. You can also see the far end crosstalk just by looking at the orange line, it's actually much lower in this case. So we're not getting the exact same results because we don't have the exact same stimulus settings programmed in here. However, we're getting the same order of magnitude. So all of this is validated. What's the other simple way to reduce crosstalk? Is to bring ground closer to your traces. Now, of course, by doing that, you may have to resize your traces to hit your impedance target. So what we can do now is we can actually test the opposite of that. We can take our stack up, move ground away from the traces a little bit, and then let's see what actually happens to the crosstalk and if we get more intense or less intense crosstalk. So now let's jump back into Altium Designer and do a quick modification for our stack up. So here, just close the signal integrity tool. If I go back into the stack up, we can change this prepreg and dielectric thickness value here. 
and let's just set it to 10 mils just for fun. Let's do the same thing on the other layer as well. So here we've doubled our dielectric thickness. Now, we wanna see what's gonna to happen to the crosstalk in the case of doubling this dielectric thickness. So let's go ahead and save this, go back into the PCB dock, go to tools and signal integrity, and now we go back through the analysis, and then we're just gonna to check to see that we have the same results for crosstalk. So here, I wanna just check the impedance again real quick. You'll see here, if I just enable the impedance column, you can see here, we've gone the other direction on, on impedance, just like we would expect. So before we had about 45 ohms, here we've got about 63 ohms. So a little high uh, if we have a 50 ohm target. However, we can always correct that by just changing the width of our traces. So of course you can go through, use the selection filter, just select those nets, change the width, and then that'll recover your impedance. Here, let's check these same nets again for crosstalk. So before I used W1 and W2, I'm gonna set W1 as the aggressor, and then let's run those crosstalk waveforms and see what we get. So now, when we take ground and move it away from those traces without doing any changes in the routing on those traces, what do we get? Well, we can already see that we have more intense crosstalk just by moving ground away from those traces. So you can see here that we initially had 40 millivolts for the near end crosstalk, and here, when we take the ground and move it away from those traces, we now have almost double. We have about 80 millivolts of near-end crosstalk. We see the same thing when we look at the far-end crosstalk. So the far-end crosstalk was here about 22 millivolts, and then here we see it's just a little over 40 millivolts. So that validates another strategy for reducing crosstalk in our design. So now, let's look at what happens with the other traces. Well, the result should be obvious, right? Before, when the other two traces were spaced farther apart, of course, they did have lower crosstalk. However, we can now look and see what happens to the crosstalk when we move the ground away from those traces. And if I just run the results, you can see here that again, we get pretty large increase in the crosstalk. Previously, if we just look at this graph, we saw that our crosstalk was pretty low, about two millivolts. But then here, we see that the crosstalk gets very high, about 10 millivolts here for the far end, and then about 20 millivolts for the near end. So that's a pretty big increase in crosstalk just by doing something simple like moving ground away from those traces. So let's take a look at these loosely coupled traces. And let's just suppose that we resize these traces to recover our impedance target. So to do that, I can just go into the stack up and here in the impedance tab, I can then just recalculate the width, and you can see here I need 8.3 mils in order to hit a target impedance of 50 ohms. So if I go back here to the PCB dock and just select these traces, I'll set these to 8.3, and then we can run this again. Let's go ahead and really quickly save the stack up, save the PCB dock, and then we'll go ahead and reanalyze the design. So now you can see here for uh, nets five and six, which are the two loosely coupled ones right here. We have recovered the impedance target according to the solver that's built into the uh, signal integrity tool. And now we can go ahead and check the crosstalk again. So we're gonna set the aggressor and run the crosstalk waveforms. So now we can compare the prior results, which are right here, with the new results, which are right here. So what happened when we just grabbed these traces and then changed the width? Well, what we actually did is we decreased the spacing between them a little bit. And so now it's comparable to this 2W case. And so in that case, we actually did increase the crosstalk a little bit. So if you're going to then resize the traces to try and hit your impedance target just by selecting them and changing the width, you actually have to be careful with that because that could increase the crosstalk because you then close in that gap between those traces. So you can see that here just by comparing these different values. We had 10 millivolts on the far end, and that's gone up 50% to about 15 millivolts just by changing the width and recovering the impedance target. So if you're going to do that, what you should actually do is maybe go in and use the retrace tool to ensure that whatever clearance value you have set between these two traces is going to be maintained. And what that's gonna do is it's going to redraw them just a little bit so that they hit that clearance value that's defined in your design rules. That's what's going on when we change that width to recover our impedance target. Now, let's go ahead and validate some of this in Symbior. 
In Symbior, what I would normally do is just right click here and go to import and import my ODB++ files that I export from Altium. But one thing that I can do is I have a tool here where I can actually just modify the stack up directly. Remember in Altium, we changed that to 10 mil. Here we're also gonna change these thicknesses in Symbior to 10 mil. We'll go ahead and save this. And then what we'll do is go back over here to our compliance manager and we'll go ahead and run this and then we can check and see what happens to the crosstalk. So already, just from increasing the thickness of those layers, we also see the corresponding increase in the crosstalk intensity in Symbior. So now we can build a linear network for this pair of traces. We'll just go ahead and hit build and then extract. And then I wanna plot the time domain crosstalk with a step waveform. And then we'll go ahead and hit finish. And then you can see here what the crosstalk has become after moving the ground plane. So here we also get a pretty big increase compared to the results here. So if I just kind of zoom in here, we saw previously that we had a pretty small pulse, less than 10 millivolts. We have a pretty large pulse reaching above 20 millivolts. That validates what we see here in the results from Altium Designer. In general, if we take that ground and move it away from our traces, we get an increase in the crosstalk. This is our second simple strategy for reducing crosstalk. Yes, you can increase the spacing between your traces and that will reduce it. However, if you don't have room to do that in a finished PCB layout, and frankly, if you just don't wanna reroute everything, you can always move ground closer to your traces by using a thinner dielectric. That will also reduce the crosstalk as we've seen from these simulation results. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to check out those links in the description. They tell you more about how to use the signal integrity tool in Altium Designer, about the model assignments that I was using in Altium Designer, and then we also have some other links that you can check out on the blog that go over some of these concepts and explain why these strategies work. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comments section, and of course, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.